just going to turn the No, 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 no. <laughs> okay, councillors, we need a quorum around the table. This should be easy. The way it's hard to catch a quorum. I've struggled on many occasions. Right, welcome uh, Amakura and, and Graham, and the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Um, this is my first finance performance meeting, so um, for those that don't know me, haven't met me before, my name's Graham Pry, I'm the General Manager of the Wakangamu. The Tatua Takatini project um, or area is um, one of the council has um, set aside you know, investment in things Māori, transformational outcomes for Māori, and uh, we're reporting that on, this on the third quarter. Um, as you can see in the executive summary, um, first two areas, the Whairawa and Whaipainga, are running at 63% of our um, budget spend up to the end of this third quarter. Uh, Whaitiaki and the Whaitika are, are running at 40 and 31 per cent respectively. So um, we expect that um, we'll end up with a 93 per cent spend by the end of the year in these projects, um, by the end of the fourth quarter. Um, there has been a review process been taking place around Tō Takatini um, to look at the Māori transformational outcomes and, and what are um, transformational as opposed to business as usual. We'll be reporting back at the end of the fourth quarter on the results of that and um, the future implications of that for the Tōtakatini project. Um, in the commentary over the page, um, I think the highlight point out of here, um, or might be a low point for, for some, is the underspend in the uh, forecast in the financial year um, 17, which is 589000 um, there are a few projects that we've highlighted in the report that are um, the result of that. And um, in our monitoring and reporting back to the performance um, committee, you know, we've had um, significant uh, engagement with the various parts of council that are running these Tōtakatini projects, and uh, that's our, our best estimate of where we're going to be at the end of the year. Leave it at that chair and see if there's any questions. Got a mover, Councillor Philip Barner. Yep. Second by Councillor Simpson. No, no. I'm happy to second, but I was going to ask a question. Okay, we'll, we'll put Councillor Simpson to second and question Councillor Simpson. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, just, <laughs> just a question because we're in a finance meeting. You do know that you're not necessarily have to meet your 100% target on spend against <coughs> budget, don't you? Yes, and that's um, definitely part of this. You know, the departments and the um, areas of council are, are well aware of um, being efficient with the money and being effective, and so it's not a not a given that everybody has to spend all their money. It's um, it is an indicator that we have to report back to IMSB on, which is why um, why we highlight the budget against uh, actual spend. Yeah, uh, tēnā korua. Um, thank you very much for the report. Just a couple of questions. Um, <clears throat> I'm, I'm not sure what the process is, but if you underexpend, do you get carryover or do you lose it? No, it's um, primarily be lost, Mayor. Um, there are a couple of instances where um, things will be accrued for the following year. Yeah. Um, that's um, key areas like um, I think it's the transport project. Um, which is looking at being carried over because it's um, capex, um, but the rest of it, yes, if it's operational, it will not um, okay. carry forward. Um, maybe I can just foreshadow a question that officials can come back on later, but years ago we, we developed in central government a process of carryover because what used to happen was that people would say, Jesus, we're going to lose this, so let's spend it, and the quality of the spend at the end was generally pretty low, and I'd kind of like maybe at a at a future point or offline just to have an explanation as to why we 
don't create an incentive or a disincentive to spending up low quality rather than being able to carry over if there's a particular reason uh, for underexpend. Um, the second question that I've got, um, you mentioned that there was a review process on, on the outcomes and, and I suppose I had in the back of my mind what, what's happening to say which of these programs are working well and doing what we want them to do and which of them are working less well. Can you tell us about the process of review and what's, what, what sort of process you're following and what sort of criteria you're looking at? Uh, through the Chair, we um, had a look at um, identifying a range of criteria, those that had been established right at the beginning, um, um, that facilitated for projects that were def defined as transformational to come into the portfolio, um, criteria that was identified by the Independent Māori Statutory Board, and we've taken uh, uh, each uh, project through that assessment process and um, and done a review and reported back to the ELG. So we've been able to, as a result, define that criteria and we're just in the process of socialising that much more now um, and getting people to understand how we're defining that um, as opposed to business as usual. Um, and we will have the full detail of that available in our final report and it will definitely uh, influence the way in which spend will be happening in the next financial year. Okay, so that, that'll be coming back to this, this yes. committee or another committee in due course and we can discuss it and what the outcomes are. Yes. Thank you very much. I'll just get Sue to respond to your first question, uh, Mayor Goff. Thank you, through the Chair. Um, Mr Mayor, the, the process we have uh, in place is that we do have agreed um, policies and procedures to carry forward CapEx, uh, particularly where they relate to multi-year uh, projects. So that is what uh, the officers here are referring to in terms of their transport project. With respect to your second question around OPEX, uh, the requirements that we have of a balanced operating budget means that we, spend, we monitor all spend very closely throughout the year and that any underspend, whether it be in Tautakatini or another operating area, operating budget of council, is not carried forward. Essentially what that becomes is, is that that um, it, it forms part of our savings targets and our efficiency budgets that must be achieved each year to balance that target. I can take you through the detail of that offline if you'd, you'd like me to. Okay, I've just got one through you with your indulgence, Mr Chairman. How do you, given that you I understand why you'd do it like that, but don't you have the disadvantage that each department would be keen to spend up at the end of their financial year for fear that uh, if you don't spend up fully, um, the <coughs> ELT will say, well, we obviously gave you more than you needed last year, so you'll get less next year as well. I mean, how do you, how do you line the incentives so that people are spending wisely without fear that that will detract from their future funding? Again, uh, through the Chair, I uh, understand your question. The way that we do that is that the savings um, and efficiency targets that we have to achieve to balance the budget are actually allocated out against each ELT member. So they, if you like the expression, is they have skin in the game. Right, we have a mover and a seconder for the report. Um, all those in favour? Aye. Aye. Engaged? Thank you, Graham. Thank you, Chair. Right, painless.